Welcome to Micro, a podcast for short but powerful writing. I'm your host, Drew Hawkins. Snakeskin boots, waning moons, and parting rifts. This episode is an ode to and an acknowledgement of the loss that accompanies motherhood. If you are a mother, have a mother, or know a mother, these pieces are for you. Our first piece puts on a pair of DSW boots and then hightails it west, building an intensity in one unfurling sentence. Written by Hannah Grieco and published in Macro Mike, it's aptly titled Boots. Enjoy. On our 293rd day at home, I pack a small bag with three pairs of underwear, my jeans, your soft sweatshirt, and I pull on the new $37 DSW boots you bought me for Christmas, tell our kids that I'm going to the store, yell, I'll be right back, but after starting the car, I take a breath, pull into the street, and drive. Not to the store, but past it and down the road, through the three stoplights to the highway, where I take the west ramp, and 37 miles later, the loop to Route 70, arguing out loud with myself, should I have gone north instead, take an 80, but 70 is the fastest, a straight shot to Denver. And so yes, west, west until the Rockies, then north, up through the wind that shakes the minivan, rattles the car seat I keep forgetting to tighten, and back down into Wyoming, stopping in Cheyenne at that little boot shop, leaving the ones you gave me on the front step by the trash can in favor of snakeskin. Maybe red, but probably brown, and from there to Lander, where there is a foot of snow on the ground and the streets are deserted, but I find that tattoo parlor again. The one I couldn't afford to go into 17 years ago, but now, with our credit card that you haven't canceled yet, you still waiting, watching my receipts as I go. A trail of gas stations and fast food restaurants and cheap motels and blank spaces after I take money out of our checking account and pay by cash for a couple of days. Then, your relief at my breakfasts at McDonald's in towns you've never heard of. And after the tattoo, the one of our kids as birds flying away, one by one, I lay sore and quiet on the hard bed, the dusty bedspread making my nose run, wondering if that guy at the parlor gave me COVID, wondering if I'll make it to Yellowstone to see the wolves like we talked about, wondering... If the park is even open for visitors right now, wondering if this will open your eyes, if you'll see that I left not because of a virus or depression or the kids, but because I needed to curl up alone in bed wearing boots, I picked out myself. Hannah Grieco is a writer and editor in Washington, D.C. You can find her on Twitter at Writes Loud or on her website at hgrieco.com. Our second piece uses a child's perspective to cast a glimpse into a mother's mind. Quietly turbulent, it's called Riptide by Robin Rosen Chang and published in Leon Literary Review. Enjoy. My mother's arm reaches out of the water and slides back in. Then the other arm. Repeatedly, they appear and disappear as they move her through the turbulent ocean. She's swimming diagonal to the shoreline, almost like someone caught in a rip tide. But she's not. She's going calmly, of her own volition, retreating from the beach where I lie. I squeeze my shut eyes hard. A sliver of her face appears 
a waning moon, when her head turns after every second stroke. Her mouth opens just enough to pull in air that holds life in her. Fixed on something she seems to see, she keeps going. She doesn't struggle. The current doesn't batter her. It doesn't carry her off. She's a white spot in the water. She's taking herself away. Robin Rosen Chang is the author of the full-length poetry collection, The Curator's Notes, from Terrapin Books in 2021. You can find her on Twitter at Chang underscore Rosen, on Facebook at R. Rosen Chang, or on her website at RobinRosenChang.com. This next piece divides waters, opens doors, and floods us with light. Capturing a very specific postpartum emotion, it's called Three Days After by Megan Pillow. It was published in Still, the journal. Enjoy. Three Days After for Silas. If I put my fingers there, I can feel it still. The crevice at the center of my abdomen, two fingers wide where the muscles part like a curtain. Behind them, the sacred space where I grew you. My organs swelled a dome in the cavity of my chest. Here, the vault of muscle. There, the mosaic of veins. And you at the center, filling the nave with sound. When I put my hand there, it was a hand that cracked the door of heaven. And I saw the gleaming new of the waters. And there was light. All of it was light, everywhere was light. And now the great room is empty. In the midnight dark, I count your fingers and toes. I watch your kick and your suckle. I reach my hands out to you, and they grow heavy with the weight of the air between us. The walls of that great room sigh and begin their slow decline. My breasts weep with the sorrow of it. My heart, that golden chandelier, Swings against the winged buttress of my lungs. Its light shudders and dims. I once read a book where the writer talked of loneliness, like a house whose windows are lit, whose rooms are filled with people, and you forever outside in the dark. But no. Loneliness is this. First, the expulsion. Then, the collapse of this cathedral built to worship you. And I alone, its witness. Megan Pillow is co-editor of The Audacity, and her work has appeared or is forthcoming in Electric Literature, Smoke Long Quarterly, The Believer, Tri-Quarterly, and Guernica. You can find her on Twitter at Meg Pillow, on Instagram at MegPillow77, or on her website at MeganPillow.com. Our final piece is one of resistance, rot, bodily autonomy, and disappointment. Written by L. Nash and published in Woe Lit, it's called Community Property. Enjoy. This is El Nash reading Community Property. Should I keep using my face to promote my writing or should I delete my face? Do you think if I deleted my face, people would be more or less inclined to find my work worthy of reading? Do you think if I deleted my body, it would be any better? 
Do you think that people are interested in my writing because I write about sex and sad things or because they can entertain a fantasy of having sex with me? What would happen if my body ceased to be a sexual object, if I mummified myself into only the useful parts of the body, heart, lung, brain, hands? Do you think that my husband would still love me? Could the baby inside me still breathe? How would I give birth? Do you think she would crawl through the sharp, desiccated remains of my dead birth canal? Or would she stay inside of me and calcify like a cold turnip? Do you think if her body began to rot inside of me, that I, too, would begin to rot? Do you think that I could still use my body to sell my writing then? I did my makeup, and I still look sad, so I just sit there looking like a sad, made-up girl. Do you think the baby inside knows when I am crying? I feel a spiral turn in, monster among men. I don't care about the ways in which my pregnant body becomes community property. In fact, I welcome it prod me, make me feel less alone. Tired of social signaling, tired of identity building, tired of perfect aesthetic, tired of internet always available, tired of social media, tired of facing the ever-present mirror, tired of never being present, tired of seeing myself and others and hating them. Puritanism is the denial of basic biological functions, the ways in which I am not here, not allowed to be here. Public places hand on swollen belly. Public says she's not wearing socks. Public smokes a cigarette. Public forgets to change a dirty diaper. Public forgets your deleted face. Public deletes your body. Public deletes your body. Public deletes your body. Public produces a child. Save the vinegar for the fatty kitchen towels, the liver crusted in your abdomen. We lick ice cubes like salt, pour baking powder in the beer, my hair a thick rope to hang myself with. It's time to accept I will never be a beautiful young whore ever again. The baby will not be a girl. My body will disappoint them in every way. My body manifests her body and our bodies belong to public. She's already tired of being everybody else's girl. I will cry and look forward to the day that I can stop eating. L. Nash is the author of Gag Reflex, Nudes, and Animals Eat Each Other. She lives in Glasgow. You can find her on Twitter and Instagram at Sad Erotica or on her website at lnash.net. That's our mother of a show. Thank you so much for listening. This episode was edited and curated by Micro's own mother, Dylan Evers, and produced and hosted by myself, Drew Hawkins. Our theme song is by Matt Ordez, and May May Kaufman runs our social media. Find us on LitHub, our website at micropodcast.org, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And be sure to check out our interview series headed by Kirsten Renault called Five Cues with Kirsten. They're short and sweet talks with writers featured on the show, and you won't be disappointed. We've got a full transcript up at our website, and if you need subtitles, check out our YouTube page, and we've got links to that on our website as well. Subscribe to the show and leave a review if you like what we do and you're feeling particularly gracious. It helps folks find us, and we super appreciate it. And be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Podcast Micro. Thanks for listening.